Greetings again, my name is uh, Jesse. And this is my video essay on um, depression and stress. Uh, a little short mood here right now. I'm trying to get this to work. <coughs> and technology always likes to be its own independent agent. I'm just gonna run a simple test. Well, I believe I did that. Um, I, I've been as, as I start talk to people. I, I realize that talking to people is an opportunity to learn, uh, but it's also an opportunity to educate. And one of the things that I try to get people to understand is that there has been for a very long time a certain philosophy in life that has been perpetuated by uh, media and that philosophy has perpetuated a very negative message and that negative message contributes to individuals mood and it contributes to <coughs> a psychological problem um, at, at, if you pay attention to these videos I know a lot of people disregard them they think it's just uh, garbage and, and somebody who doesn't know what he's thinking about just you know mouthing off and the reality is that you know like I told someone today is once you post 700 articles on the internet what really is there left to say however um, when I started realizing that it is important to do this not only because the information should be available to individuals but also because um, <coughs> there are people who have need who are hurting who have pain and suffering and who would desire to, to experience change and change is one of those things that it, it's rather difficult to do if you don't have the proper guidance we all think that we understand human behavior. We all think that we understand um, how to think, how to feel, and how to function in life. And as I was developing this and, and organizing my thoughts, I was um, putting certain things in order and I'm just going to jump ahead here because, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's necessary to understand that as we're, as we're experiencing life, we're experiencing a lot. And maybe I'll, I'll just, I was going to jump ahead, but I'm going to, it's better to stay organized. I chastise people who have conversations with me who, um, you know, uh, jump around. I happen to believe, I told a person, I'm a solution-oriented person. One, I do believe there's a solution. And two, I believe that we should employ solutions. If we're not feeling well, if we're not healthy, if we're suffering from anxiety, depression, pain and suffering, hurt, um, we can. I'm a firm believer that we have everything necessary to examine ourselves, examine our emotions, and come to certain conclusions in life. Firm believer in that. And I know that there are people who, for whatever reason, don't subscribe to the idea that they're empowered and they can have a lot to do with their own um, treatment, with their own recovery. Uh, I had a conversation yesterday with, uh, with an individual about soldiers and post-traumatic stress disorder. And as serious as post-traumatic stress disorder is, I would have to say that people do have the necessary skills um, that can help them uh, deal with all the, um, I'm going to use the word emotion and use the word residue. Those of us who have not been to war cannot attempt to pretend to know what it is to go to war. That's absolutely correct. However, one of the needs to attack people 
is because you're defensive. And <coughs> I keep saying that. I keep bringing that point up. When we're defensive, we have a tendency to be violent and aggressive. Why are we defensive? What is it that we're trying to protect when somebody attempts to give us assistance and we, we either pick a, a verbal fight with them or maybe even a physical fight? See, one of the things is, is, is I know that I'm engaged in a war of ideas. But I'm engaged in the war of ideas with individuals who don't meditate to the point that I meditate. I question everything. I'm grateful that I was able to earn a bachelor's in psychology. Some people may think, well, you only all you have is psychology. You have you have no authority to speak. Um, long, long time ago, I told a person, you know, just being a human being allows us to understand psychological processes because we all engage in relationship. We all engage in life. And we all, through engaging in relationships and engaging in life, we learn certain behaviors that we use to survive. In psychology, they're called coping mechanisms. And just because we learned a coping mechanism doesn't necessarily mean that that coping mechanism is correct. And a lot of what gets us in trouble not being prepared to or being willing to listen to somebody else um, and I keep telling people I keep telling people I'm, I'm not gonna fight with anybody it's a waste of my time to fight with people if I had gotten to a master's level as a professional counselor which I still can do which I'm, I'm not interested in or a, a psychologist level I would have very little patience with individuals who are showing up nine months after therapy started and they're still de dealing with the little issues. We're either willing to learn and progress and give ourselves the gifts of peace, love, and joy or we're playing games. now. Excuse me. Again, the more I talk, the more I cough. Um, the conversation I had yesterday with the individual, we were talking about degrees of complications, degrees of trauma, uh, degrees of illness. And it is. Uh, many people can go through life, uh, have um, romantic relationships that didn't work out, lose jobs that they, that they thought was a perfect job for them, maybe not get to life where they wanted to in their uh, educational career. Uh, be living in a marriage or a romantic relationship that is unhealthy and, and, and they're able to cope and then there's some people who are sort of able to cope but it still affects them and then there's the individuals who enter into um, um, what we will call severe stages of, of, um, of mental health illness but I know the com I had a conversation and this had nothing to do well it was sort of involved psychology, mostly involved religion, and the individual made the point that when Jesus Christ said, <clears throat> when I was in prison you visited me, when I was hungry you fed me, when I was <clears throat> cold you clothed me, <clears throat> what he meant was, you know, every time somebody in need is in our presence and we fail to meet that need, we're failing to meet it to that person, but we're also failing to meet that need to Jesus Christ. Now, I've always, and I've always been very serious about things. I happen to believe that if we don't tell people what's wrong with them, they'll never improve. We've been trying to develop the society where we're, where we're saying, um, you know, <coughs> people are big boned and 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 they shouldn't be disrespected for being overweight and I'm overweight um, and it's a fallacy I think one of, one of the biggest th harms that Oprah Winfrey did to many members of, of society in the world society is that she spoke in a manner where 
she gave permission for individuals to be engaged in the homosexual lifestyle and a lot of people have gone ahead and accepted Oprah Winfrey's philosophy and gone into homosexual lifestyle but have figured out or are experiencing the reality that is very stressful and in that lifestyle are a lot of resources for depression and anxiety and I try not to preach religion when I'm doing science and to me psychology is science however you have to understand that the world and the universe was put in order by a creator and when you're violating those rules you you you're going to encounter problems you're going to encounter stress um, <clears throat> so even though we want to do something that we believe we have the right to want to do the justice that is in place in the universe <coughs> is always going to interfere with us but that's not like the scope of this uh, conversation I've written and I know I've done some some video essays and I gotta clean out you know I gotta clean out the closet but I'm one of these individuals that you know I'll write an article because I believe on this issue an article is better and and I'm doing video essays for one reason is I don't want to write anymore and two I just think the world is at that level has been at that level for a very long time where everybody's video orientated now are we video orientated where we're willing to listen to somebody who may be wiser than we are I don't know I do know that a lot of people are are medicating their depression and their anxiety with cat and dog videos on the internet one of the biggest problems in, in modern society and I pay attention and I was going to say if you pay attention you'll notice that one of the biggest problems in modern society is the increase of mental health issues and in, in depression um, the second session is actually talking about depression right now I'm just talking about the stressors that can lead to depression <clears throat> but in depression one of the reasons that we stop you know we start we get into a, a corner we back ourselves into a corner of depression when we can't get out of is because we forget how to live we uh, I've said it before we are multi-dimensional we're not unidimensional we're multi-dimensional we're not made just to work or we're not made just to exist in the superficial levels of of being a, a, a spouse <coughs> a parent a homekeeper and an employee I mean we have to have a full life and one of the reasons that I happen to believe that that depression is growing is because people no longer know how to have a full life and that's one contributing factor <coughs> mm, excuse me oh maybe I should just stop but I've been struggling all day I'm just gonna trudge on and it is important to understand that we shouldn't be looking at our neighbor and obsessing on our neighbor's problems. We have enough work to do with ourselves. And the question is, is are we willing to do it? There's a contributing factor to depression which has to do with the chemical imbalance in the brain, specifically talking about neurotransmitters and there's really not much well excuse me I gotta correct myself I was gonna say there's really not much the individual can do and the correction is if the individual is paying attention to the modern remedies that are offered if you go to a psychologist a licensed professional counselor whoever that person may be even a psychiatrist they're not going to teach you how to restructure your thoughts. They're not going to give you hope by telling you that you're empowered because you can think, organize, plan, and act. Now, I need to stop here and, and, and talk a little bit about the environment that we have been told exists. And that because we've been told exists, we measure 
our perception of life by that vision of life that they had given us and that's an error now it, it has been preached for a very long time uh, get a good education in your early years <coughs> transition into college and graduate from college <coughs> get into a career build a career you know uh, crawl your way up the the, the the management ladder, uh, the administrative ladder, and <coughs> and get to a point in time in your life, <coughs> man, when God wants to stop you from doing something, He really does work at it. So, and for a lot of people, that dream just didn't manifest. Now, <coughs> a lot of us, a lot of us are our own worst enemy. A lot of us are very childish, very immature, very petty. Uh, I can give examples of individuals who use uh, fake, they fake having mental health issues as a means of not having to try, as a means of not participating in life. And when you see these things, you, you get an understanding that. I apologize for the video. I can see what's going on with the video. I just technology has been a pain in the ass. So I'm, on, I'm just gonna let it go. I, I I keep saying that you don't have to look at the video. You just can just hear the message, and the message is what is important. I'm not even important. <coughs> so in the beginning, when I started talking about stressors, what you feel, that angst, that pain and suffering, unexplained, but you haven't the slightest idea what the source is. If you sat down with a neurologist or a qualified uh, psychiatrist or psychologist, they'd be able to explain to you what, what uh, chemical imbalance in the brain is. And you'd have some idea, some understanding. And if you pay attention to what is offered as modern medicine, as modern science, uh, you'll think that that's it. They'll never tell you that you have the ability to fix yourself that you don't have to invest a whole bunch of money in psychotherapy. And I'm not being irresponsible. I happen to believe that we understand who we are. <coughs> Always. And if we're at a critical point, we need to understand it and seek um, appropriate treatment. And what do you there are people who are sitting there in their homes or there, where they are and they're experiencing an a overwhelming amount of pain and suffering of hurt and it's not because there is some source that they can point the finger to that they can understand it's because of the chemical imbalance in the brain there are also life stressors that lead us to depression and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and clearly define the issue in depression. The depression is, the, the, the issue to me, the most important issue in, in depression is that we convince ourselves that it's hopeless. We back ourselves into a corner of hopelessness, of despair. And the reason we do that is because society tells us to graduate from high school, to graduate from college, university, to get a career, to, to advance in the career. And if you don't, the message is implied that you're a particular type of person and a person who is not valuable. <coughs> so we're working hard to fit this, you know, this little exercise of society. And it doesn't go in our way. We're going to very easily accept the idea of society that if you don't do this there's something wrong with you and again that's a thought in our head there are people in society who are always going to put us down we're going to be working at, at attempting to destroy us <coughs> however we're the individuals that control our own thoughts and we don't that, that was what I was going to say in the issue of neurotransmitters if you look at modern science, you're going to struggle if your own body is working against you. 
But if you realize that you're empowered because of your ability to organize your thoughts, to plan a strategy by understanding your thoughts, and to act, to set up goals and objectives in order to minimize your pain and suffering, then you're, you're going to take on a different perspective. <clears throat> I could sit here and just, just say nothing more than all issues in mental health can be easily resolved if we change our perspective. If we stop being a negative person, if we stop beating up on ourselves, if we, if we stop believing that it's hopeless, because it isn't hopeless. As long as we have the ability to think, organize, plan, and act, it isn't hopeless. Therefore, we need to believe in ourselves. And when we believe in ourselves, we start working for ourselves, and we start setting goals, and we start accomplishing certain things in life. A lot of who we are is Freudian. Freudian was right. Unresolved childhood issues manifest in adult problems. And when things happen in society, a lot of us quickly go to the parent as an explanation. And we get a lot of grief from members of society because that's the way people want to think. The individual who committed the crime is the individual who should be responsible. That's absolutely correct. However, that person is who he or she is because of the relationship he or she had with his or her parent. It's undeniable. It's a written psychological rule. So you can be a person right now with a lot of pain and suffering, a lot of anxiety or depression and unable to explain it because you don't remember the difficulties in the relationship between yourself and your parents. As we're walking through life, and I'm on here, emotional home. Oh, it would help if I was over there. Excuse me, hold on. I'm right here. It, it would help if we understood how to balance emotional health. As we're encountering friendships that are in good status and bad status or social status, uh, romantic partners, you know, good romantic partners, bad romantic partners, we're taking on stress. We're even taking on duress. And if we understood that there's a healthy way to put things in perspective, those emotional turmoils that come from interpersonal relationships wouldn't be great stressors that contribute to depression. Okay, and in those stressors, failure in life. Let me see if I can find my little. Why? Why, why is it always that when technology just wants to attack you, it will? Okay, now I'm here. Not there. Ha! Failures, and it's important to understand. We define it as a failure. Again, it is important to understand that we have defined it as a failure. If we lost the perfect job, we're the ones that said this is a failure. If we lost the perfect romantic partner, we're the ones that have defined that as a failure. It may actually be a success. And the reason it may be a success because who wants to be in a relationship that is dysfunctional and is causing them stress, pain, suffering, hurt? And especially if that pain, suffering, and hurt is overwhelming. And since I start everything with thoughts, it is helpful to understand that the stressor and the failure is how we view it. Sam. And again, I could just keep talking about being positive, optimistic, realistic. <coughs> One of the things that I, I, I stress about is realism. <coughs> and the reason I stress realism is because I'm not talking about a morbid realism. I'm talking about a realism when we're grateful for what we have and we enjoy what we have. You know, when you talk to people and, and, and they're depressed and they're complaining about life and they tell you, I don't have anything, um, you know, <coughs> I could knock off a list 
of things they do have, like a television, a radio, books, access to the internet, friends, family members, food to eat, roof over their head. And this perspective that we create for ourselves actually harms us. Now we can do, uh -huh. let me see here, yeah. We can do harm to ourselves, you know, by not being good financial managers. And that has, well, in a marriage it has a lot to do with interpersonal relationships, but we can stress ourselves out by spending too much. And of course, <coughs> we can harm ourselves, our health, by allowing that stress, you know, to, to lead us to drink a lot of soda or alcohol or drugs. And I have no respect for people who use drugs. I understand the illness, um, still never going to agree, agree with the legalization of marijuana. It's, it's dangerous, a poison. Not only does it poison the, the spirit, the soul, it poisons the body. So, in an effort to talk to people, to have a conversation, to say, hey, listen, if this is going on in your life, you may want to try these strategies. I have to be aware of the fact that it's a hard fight. Because people don't want to listen. Nobody wants to listen. And that's why a lot of people who I talk to, very few people who I talk to, and they ask me, you know, why this ha it exists in my life, or that exists in my life, is like, for well, number one is, I'm not going to obsess on someone else's challenge. I'll attempt to be an assistant, and I'll share my wisdom with anybody. But if individuals want to go to that road of, you know, it, it is like when your mom asked you to clean your room, and you didn't want to do it petty childishness for no other reason than just petty childishness and when you're a child petty childishness is expected but when you're an adult experiencing serious complications difficulties the answer is not to be a petty child and I should have added to this discussion here on my on my little board that um, accepting of somebody else's wisdom. You should have added that a, a section to discuss accepting somebody else's wisdom. Am I the smartest person in the world? No. Are the people smarter than, than I am? Yes. <coughs> but in everything that I see, I don't see people telling other people, listen, believe in yourself. Uh, think, organize, plan, and act, put things in a positive perspective. Let me see here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read off my board here because this, this this centralizes the whole message, you know. It's what I call positive ideation, and which is basically thinking positive, being optimistic, and being realistic in order to control our emotions and our sensations, and by doing so, we'll control our behaviors. Most of what disappoints us in life is not how we think or what we feel, but what we do. Conflicts at work, conflicts in the marriage, conflicts with friends and brothers and sisters. So the fights is what disappoints us. And the reason we're fighting is because we don't feel good. And the reason we don't feel good is because of the negative message in our society. Okay? And one of the things that I know is, is when people are in conflict, they don't like themselves very much. So uh, on my list, I have, <coughs> as a suggestion, we should value ourselves. We should like ourselves. One of the reasons that we should like ourselves is because we have values. We're good people. We're nice people. We get a little upset when things don't go our way. And if things were better, we'd probably have a better spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my. Mm, what a day for coffee. So, going down here, and of course I keep saying that we're empowered because we have the ability to think, organize, plan, and act. And that is important because we can evaluate environmental information. 
we can read job sites, job websites, and send our resumes. You know, we can be realistic about the job environment in our area and make some critical decisions about what we're going to do as far as careers are concerned, earning a living. It may be moving to a different city is what's necessary. I like an organized life, and I know a healthy organized life is one way where we set goals and we construct the objectives to meet those goals. And the reason goals are important is because of personal accomplishment. <coughs> personal accomplishment is, is positive and it's also a simple pleasure. Okay. And as we oh, the the idea behind goals is to set manageable goals. You just set things that you can accomplish. If you're just going to set goals and you're going to frustrate yourself because you can't meet them, you're going to continue the cycle of negativity, of pain, and suffering, of hopelessness, of distress. What is really hopeless? As long as we're willing to try and able to try, there really isn't anything that is hopeless. The vision that they give us about life, it's a great vision if you can accomplish it. I'm not taking anything away from anybody. But what if you can't accomplish it? Does it mean that life is over? In my opinion, no. We should be able to accept our reality, enjoy what we have, and appreciate what we have. And as we're working towards goals and accomplishing them, our confidence grows. <clears throat> One of the dumbest things, and I keep hearing it, and I hear it from people who, who I honestly wish would not say it, uh, and they say it in such a crass, uh, condescending, um, critical manner, um, I should out them and mention their names, but what good will come of that? Um, Self-esteem is important. Self-esteem comes from confidence. And confidence comes from personal accomplishments. Mood is related to self-esteem. Spirit is related to self-esteem. Um, why schools have decided to give everybody a trophy when they won or lost? I don't know. I don't. I do know that in life, feeling good about ourselves, liking ourselves is very important to good mental health. Okay? It's important to good mental health because that's when we feel good about ourselves, we're in the mood to enjoy life. And there's so much that we can do. There's so many things that we can spend our time in. And a lot of that stuff is actually more poisonous than other things. I have to remind myself when I do this that I've admonished other <coughs> leaders in the mental health industry for preaching their morality to their clients. It is not the job of a mental health expert to preach his or her morality to his or her clients. If you want to participate in orgies, you, I guess it's your choice. I happen to know that that is not a simple, healthy pleasure of life, and it is something that's going to bring you more stress, more pain, than actual pleasure. But again, once we have gone through a restructuring of our lives, a restructuring of our attitudes, we're thinking positive, we're optimistic, we have hope, we value ourselves because we know we're good and decent people, we have values, we have principles, we recognize that we're empowered because we can think, organize, plan, and act. That means we can evaluate information and, and, and organize that information and we can set some goals and some objectives. And then as we are accomplishing our goals and objectives, as we're having personal success, we start to feel good about ourselves and we start to gain confidence. And as we're gaining confidence, our self-esteem is growing. And as our self-esteem is growing, we're no longer in the, this mental funk. You know, we're, we're no longer, we're, we're not able to enjoy life. We're actually able to um, laugh 
have to play again. And, and confidence leads to self-esteem. And we, when we're able to laugh and play again, we should be focused on healthy activities, simple, healthy pleasures of life, like friendships, like family, like good food, good healthy food, uh, literature. I think that right now is probably the scariest time in the human race because electronic media has decided to to lend themselves to every perversion available. And that is poisoning the human spirit. It is it is taking away positive energy and filling the vacuum with negative energy. Okay. <coughs> and any stressor any stressor, we are the ones who code it, we're the ones that define it, we're the ones that decide this is this. And if we're being taught the negative, then the events of our lives, we're going to categorize under the negative. And the more we categorize, categorize it under the negative, the more press we get, the more anxious we get, the more afraid of life we get. And that's not a good experience. Nobody wants to live a life where they're afraid to leave their home because they're, they're, they're hurting too much. They want to be home and feel safe and secure. That's not a lot to live. And again, I wish more people, more mental health professionals, would help their clients restructure their perception. I was, the individual I was having a religious uh, conversation with. Um, I am convinced <coughs> that Jesus Christ isn't going to come anytime soon. Nobody knows the day or the time. Okay, but we see so much in the world, and those who are religious, or even if you're not religious, a lot of people have just decided that things are so bad right now that the world is destined to end. <coughs> and I tell people, planet Earth is too massive to shatter like a glass. We don't have that kind of power. I know human beings want to think they have that kind of power. We don't have that kind of power. We can set off every nuclear uh, weapon that exists. We're still not going to shatter the planet. It will destroy life on the surface won't shatter the planet. And if you live in this environment of all this news about Republicans and Democrats and Obama growing the national debt and, and not respecting people's religions and, and government encroachment on private life and all the, the, the horror you hear from the world of, of young girls being kidnapped and, and, and forced to marry Muslims, you know, this, this, this whole insanity you're going to convince yourself that <coughs> maybe there's no and there's no hope for you. That's that reality. But you don't have to look at it as that reality. You don't have to automatically go to the negative. You don't have to automatically assume the worst. And like I said before, we are our, our own worst enemy. Because we have been trained, we have been conditioned, you know, you want to make a reference to Pavlov's dog, we have been conditioned to automatically assume the worst and automatically to think that everything is bad. When I write issues on politics, one of the things that, that, I, that I focus on is that there's people going around with an attitude that everything sucks, nothing works, so why bother? Well, if you're of that mindset, you're not part of the process. And if you're not part of the process, you're the reason that everything sucks. But I really should say that we are the reason that everything sucks. If we would stop saying everything sucks, nothing works, why bother? And actually being part of the process and elected and choosing elected representatives and staying on top of them so they'll do what they have to do, <coughs> we would have a better society. So, we have an environment that is true. 
that is ugly, that is horrible, that poisons a lot of people's spirit. It doesn't have to poison your spirit. It doesn't have to poison my spirit. It is what it is. We can't change it. What we can change is how we feel and how we're going to use the resources in our environment to our life to meet the basic needs of life. We are our own worst enemy because we are our own. We are creating stressors and those stressors are, are complicating our mental health because they're leading to depression and anxiety. And I have to be, you know, a dead horse and keep saying that we control our thoughts with our thoughts we control our emotions and sensations and by controlling our emotions and sensations we control our behavior. And again, this is an effort to help people who are in this life of, of unbearable pain and suffering to calm down. One of the things I have not is one of the things I have not done in, in the last three years is on mental health is talk about stress, emotional management, which I believe starts in relaxation therapy. And relaxation therapy is nothing more than that. What we've all laughed about in sitcoms, counting the ten, sitting down in a quiet area, you know, breathing exercises. Um, there's some biofeedback where you listen to your heart rate and you practice certain breathing exercises so you can bring your heart rate down. When you're scared, your heart rate is elevated, which means more blood is going to the brain, which means you're, you're, you're confused, you're becoming agitated. Okay, so it, 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 breathing exercises and controlling the heart rate actually leads to relaxation. And you want to relax because when you're relaxed, you're able to think, you're able to concentrate, you're able to put things in order, and you're able to have a better perspective. I've been telling somebody uh, in the business that I'm involved in that, that you're doing things to get the better of you. And by doing so, you're becoming agitated, you're not able to think clearly, and you're making serious mistakes, the kind of mistakes that can get them thrown out of the business. I don't consider myself a teacher anymore. I don't consider myself a spiritual guide anymore. I'm happy that I got to the point in time where I've organized life and this philosophy of life to this extent where it's a useful resource for me. And as much as I want to do these videos to help people, I'm not obsessed with the challenges of other people's lives. And I think one of the reasons is, is because people have to be obsessed with the challenge of their own life. They have to step forward and this is what I have to do so there can be change. So my life can be different. So my life can be enjoyable. So my life can be pleasant. Videos are an effort in education. Uh, I'm a firm believer that if you give everybody a bachelor's in psychology, you'll have uh, happier, healthier people. And I don't mean just giving the paper and the certificate. I mean, given the opportunity to take the courses. And today, there is a lot of um, uh, media on the internet that individuals can read or listen to or watch and can help them grow in their standing of life and how life functions. We can attempt to be difficult in our philosophy and say, no, it has to be the way I think. We can do that. We can put our foot down and say, life has to be how I want it to be. But that's not going to make life what you want it to be. A lot of accepting life is accepting what is happening, but it's accepting it in a healthy, positive perspective. So when we don't accept it in a healthy, positive perspective, we're causing stress on ourselves, and that stress is going to lead to depression and anxiety. <coughs> and I'm a firm believer that, that uh, one, I was gonna I was gonna use Robin Williams as a, an example. That I believe in that Robin Williams could have helped himself, you know, and, and uh, a better example would have been Amy Winehouse. 
she could have helped herself to deal with her challenges her stressors her negativity to deal with the pain that she was trying to mask with alcoholism to understand that these drugs indulgence in these drugs is dangerous um, people can have their opinions what they want to do I know they like to laugh at Lindsay Lohan or, or, or Miley Cyrus or even Amy Winehouse um, and the reason I wouldn't
should. I should sit here and name names. And, and, and there's one person who I never want to listen to his radio program. And I realized in my life that a lot of what happens in my life is not me, it's not other people, it's God. For whatever purpose. And I didn't like listening to this guy, but then I, I started challenging my psychological brain uh, to evaluate this individual, as, as I understand human behavior and psychology. And to me, it is ironic that somebody who's such a distressed turmoil, life of turmoil, would trash self esteem. Because whether he knows it or not, what he's searching for is feeling good in his life. That's self-esteem. When you're home and you're able to enjoy a good book as you listen to classical music, that's, that's a personal pleasure, pleasure for me. It's because you're at peace and that peace comes from self-esteem. You feel good about yourself. You like yourself. You understand life is going to happen and you're equipped to deal with the challenges of life and you're on top of your life. You're not letting things happen and catching you off guard like not paying your bills, spending your money irresponsibly. Do you want that peace? Do you want that love? You know, 
uh, I was developing a, an article about um, no, 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 video essay about how living according to the ideas of modern life is leaving a lot of people without what life really is about what makes life complete fulfilling there's a lot of people moving from relationship A, B, C, D, and E and enjoying whatever that is giving them but you're going to get to a point in their life where you're going to realize I threw my life away I never became a mom I never became a dad I never had the joy of raising children and there's so many people suffering because they're not going to Paris, because they're not going to Disneyland in I don't know, Florida, wherever Disneyland is, California. Um, and they don't realize that they have something way better than Disneyland in their own home. Their children. There's great pleasure and joy in raising children if you're focused on that. But the messages in media in our modern society don't allow people to be parent focused, parent centered. There's this life that we have created, well, I really should say this life that we have created for us is not really a life. It's a machine, it's a robot. There's no human contact, no human interaction. We're interacting with machines. And the human contact that, that, that exists what I call decadent indulgence. And again, not my job to preach morality. This is not, this is science. And science is valuable, really. However, when I first, a long time ago, when I first started writing out articles, I would ask the reader if the philosophy of life is so great. Why is it your life that great? See, I observe everything. I see how to convince me that you're, you could be living a great life. If you're living a great life, it shows. But when you're living a horrible existence, you're not going to convince me you're living a great life. So, there was a person, and I'm close to this, with my summation. There was a person who I used to know, I used to get out early in the morning to go conduct business. Hey, hey, hate the taxi business. Hate even admitting that I have a bachelor's in psychology and I earn my money as a taxi driver. It's an offense. It's an insult. But I do it because I believe in being responsible. And ironically, it's something that I hate so much actually I'm very good at. <coughs> However, the issue is every morning when I would go out get in the taxi and go out and conduct business, I would see this person slumped on the stairs as I was walking out the apartment building. I mean, just a, a horrible look of despair and depression. And I would look with an opinion of, wow, what a disgusting sight. Now, some people may think that I'm cruel. And I'm not. I, I, I don't consider myself the smartest person on the planet. Only God knows why it is He opened my eyes to this wisdom. He lent me this wisdom. But I honestly believe that it's available to everybody. I've done things to earn a living that I've had to do with security guards. I'm still a teacher. I work in warehouses. It, to me, it's simple. <coughs> There's things that are missing. But because I'm in a good plane, a good perspective, a positive perspective, I'm not tearing myself up over it. And my life isn't over. But the point being that, that, that this individual who was this, 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 I used to call her, a, I used to call her a, 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 a lump of a, a depressed clay. That individual could have started having a different vision of life. That individual could have started believing in himself, trying to be more positive, more optimistic, gaining hope, setting up some goals and some objectives. And as he accomplished 
manageable goals, manageable objectives, gain confidence, which will lead to self-esteem. And self-esteem leads to a spirit, needing the spirit to enjoy life. And the way to enjoy life is in a healthy manner. Every day we should have simple, healthy pleasures of life. If all we're going to do is obsess on what's wrong, we're going to feel bad. So it, it, it's psychology. Focus on the negative, feel bad. Focus on the positive, feel good. Because feeling good and focusing on the positive distracts you from the negativity. And eventually you get into this rhythm and challenges present themselves and, and you know how to deal with them. You're, 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 you're a, a fully, finely tuned machine. And it's one, two, three. A crisis entered, I gotta do one, two, three. You're up, you're up for the challenge. And that takes planning. That takes work, it takes effort. There's a lot of stresses in life. Uh, a lot of what happened to us during our birth relationships is affecting us as adults. Uh, how we coped with emotional turmoil out of friendships and relationships with family members and romantic relationships has contributed to our personality. Our failures, our identification of failures, things happen in life. Things happen in life that we don't want to happen. It's our opportunity to put them in the proper place and have a realistic perspective of what happened. Not automatically assuming the worst and not automatically going down the road of negativity. Um, of course, intimate relationships come with their challenges. Again, but it's how we define things. We don't, we, we don't have to obsess on one person. We don't have to say, this is the only person for me. That, that's foolishness. Um, again, not Christian religion, be careful on that, but show me in the Bible where there's a vision of the romantic ideals that we have. I don't see that in the Bible. Everything we believe about falling in love, love at first sight, you know, <coughs> everything being automatically beautiful just because there's love there. I don't see that. You don't know how to manage life. No. You gotta check the time here. Okay, I'm at an hour plus. But one of the reasons people fail at marriage or believe they have failed at marriage is because they got into a relationship out of desperation and they clung to someone from the pain and loneliness. They just went out to find somebody so they could no longer feel lonely. That's a function of human behavior. Loneliness. And then they realize throughout the marriage that they really don't know who they're married to. And the reason they don't know who they're married to is because they don't even know who they are. See? We're not taught to know ourselves very well. We're just, we're, we're nothing more than a leaf being blown around by the wind. Or being taken down. Unfortunately, sometimes that leaf is taken down. But the choice is yours. You have to decide what life you want, and how much you want it, and if you really want it. Uh, and then my clothes, and I went a little farther on into the inspiration of but, again, there are stressors, things that happen to us, at which we view them, that contribute to our idea that it's hopeless. And just as we have convinced ourselves that it's hopeless, we can believe in ourselves, and we can start working for a better life.